guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Thought I would include you today um, in our excursion here. We are foraging the last of our firewood for the season. <laughs> and we are using our portable winch, which is absolutely a lifesaver. It's great for our hunting season to pull our elk and deer, if necessary, off the mountainsides. But today we are pulling a lot of firewood. I'm going to spin this around and show you what's going on. Our firewood, our last load of firewood for the winter. Um, this winch has been an absolute lifesaver because we've still got our work ahead of us because we still have to go get this wood all the way down the mountainside. So without this winch, 
What's that? If you have a little drive to you, most people wouldn't work this hard to get their firewood. But then they whine and complain when they can't get it. Why can't I get any firewood? Well, get your butt out there and do some work. Yeah, and this is larch. So the reason we are working so hard for this larch is because it burns hotter and it burns easy. <laughs> and it burns longer during the nights. So you're up less during the night. It's more efficient. and But oftentimes it's more work. You're standing on <laughs> it's more it's more work to find and to get to but it's worth everybody it everybody wants it yeah yeah so and if you're wondering why my eyes oh. swelled up <laughs> I was there there. yesterday <laughs> actually tammy slapped me good <laughs> i called her a name and she slapped me so, i was up here yesterday working on this it and uh yellow jacket stung me in the eye so right in the corner that's why my eyes all it didn't Swelled swell up. up real bad last night, but boy, when he rolled over this morning, <laughs> my reaction wasn't good. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> I couldn't help but go, oh my word. Go. So. His eye was almost shut. I know. Yeah, his eye's not as bad as it was this morning. But I just thought I'd bring you on here and show you. You know, um, sometimes the jobs that are involved in homesteading may take a little bit of extra work, but we'll be sitting pretty this winter, and we'll actually be very warm this winter. So, And I think we're going to get hammered with snow and have a really harsh winter. So, you know, that's why we're stocking up. And kudos to these guys, because I haven't been able to be out here helping them like I usually do so they've been doing all the grunt work and all the hard work I'm just gonna help load the truck today so but you know this is the kind of stuff you need to do and these are the kind of tools you need to have uh, to do to get the work done efficiently and easily and and with less strain on your body the winch has been a lifesaver but it's it it's a roughly a thirteen hundred dollar unit but we've had it for what four years now yeah not a job I had a job I had to do that oh, yeah. paid for the winch, so. Yeah. But they're, I know they're expensive, but they're well worth, if you can afford it, they're, depending on where you live and stuff, they're well worth it. Very much so, and, and when you take down an elk out here, and it's across the way 800 yards and on a steep slope, it really will help us. Huh? Make sure I don't pull that hook all the way. There we go. Sorry. But um it you know, having the can hook is well, a great tool. A um yeah. those can be found at yard sales, antique stores, and um I'll do some research and find out and put it in the uh description uh, as to where you can get newer versions. Ours are all old. Uh, we like using antiques, they last and they've been you know, show that they've lasted, they're fifty plus years old. So I'm going to jump off of here for now. Um, we'll show you what we've come up with and what we, uh, what our final uh, forage looks like because we brought three vehicles today to, to bring this home. So um, we're going to get out of their way and we'll get on here a little later. I'm at the bottom of the mountainside here. So you can see the distance they need to get this pile of wood down yet. And behind me still probably another 20 yards. So it's a good distance. It's a lot of work, but like I said, the rewards are great. Out here we have white pines, white fir, uh, lodgepole, red fir, and the tamarack or larch. And uh, the, the better burning woods are your larch, tamarack, and uh, uh, lodgepole. We also have ponderosas out here, but they're not as... Uh, dominant in this particular area, but um, I don't know if we're gonna have enough rope. oh wow, 
But that's why we go after the larch because it also burns less sooty, so you don't have uh, as much trouble with your chimneys and, and things clogging up. So, so like you said, it might be a little bit more work. I mean, most people cut wood along the road, but he goes in and, and seeks out the firewood, and it doesn't typically matter where it's that, where he finds it is where he finds it, and that's what we go after. Like I said, it's just the importance of having the right tools and, and budgeting and working towards the right tools. You know, like you said, we wouldn't have been able to get this ourselves if it wouldn't have been for the other job that he was doing that required it. And so, and these are great ways to, you know, tools like this are something you can do to, that you can use to help other people, maybe make a little bit of side income as far as you know, helping people get their uh, elk and deer out of the woods, also helping them, you know, this will pull a vehicle, this will pull 2,200 pounds. Um, so, it's extremely useful and it could be easily used to, uh, like I said, make a side income, depending on your area and the different things, uh, industries and, and what you have going on. As you can see, this is not an easy task. He's got a lot of debris. He does have a cone that he uses, or that he made out of a 55-gallon drum. I'll put a picture in this video so you can see it. Um, what it does is it goes around the front of the logs and helps it to come down the mountain without getting caught in a lot of the debris. But it was because we're coming down the mountain the way we are, it tends to be more of a pain in the bottom than than it's worth right now. When we're pulling up the mountain, it's a little different. Um, but coming down the mountain, um, it's it's harder just to continue getting it on and off. So, so he decided not to use it today. But I will include that in here because that's extremely useful. You can purchase them, but he's the MacGyver. He makes everything we have. You know, and he, if we don't have to spend the money, you know, he's he's always trying to fabricate something and. get the logs to the end of the mountain. This is the next step in getting them where they're accessible. Our wood sieve takes 16 inches, so he uses a blade. I think it's actually 18 inches. Um, then he uses a blade to measure and marks it to it's really easy for them to send them off the log and cut with the chainsaws and get them in the right size. Then I can load. I'm actually excited. This is my first venture out doing firewood. I love it. Just haven't been able to with this illness. So I'm not sure how long I can go today, but I'm going to try. Good sweat helps and I need to rebuild my muscles. So here we go. As you can see the mountain boy down there. Down there. He's suiting up. He's actually putting on um, loggers' chest. He's a good safeguard. He also has a helmet that he wears just in case. It's real easy for a chainsaw to kick. Uh, Glenn actually has a good scar on his leg from a chainsaw. And his grandfather had an incident with a chainsaw where it kicked up and caught him in the forehead. So, you know, it's important to be wearing proper gear when you're using a chainsaw, but the, the uh, loggers' chaps are really good because the saws don't um, quickly penetrate through that material. So, being that it's so vast up here, you know, and they're by themselves often, it's good to be equipped in the right equipment and taking safety first because even though we're probably, I don't know, 10, 12 miles from home. It's a long way if you're injured, so. It's a good skill to know how to use a chainsaw. To 
be able to uh, fell trees in the event of a fire, you know, creating a fire break and also being able to get your firewood. So these are skills that, <laughs> that everybody should have, men and women included. That is a custom made can hook, if you will. The mountain man actually made that. Watch yourself. Cut. For that purpose. Cut down the right here. <laughs> Most can hooks don't have that leg on it. They're just a tool that you use to roll the log, but this one he put a more or less like a, a stand on it so that he can turn the log and hold the log. How we stay fit. So this is how we stay fit. Okay. has muffs on it but he uses the earplugs instead I think it's easier. So it's quite the process. You've got to fell the tree. First of all you gotta find him since we're being choosy, you know, so you gotta find your tree, then you gotta fell it, then you gotta limb it got to pull it up or down the mountainside because they're usually never easy to find and they're in a good spot. We get them down where you can cut them. We still got to load them on the truck. And then we still got to get them home and unload them and chop them. And then you got to stack them. So it is quite the process to fire them. But like I said, it's part of our exercise routine on the homestead. It's also just part of what we do. Saves ourselves a lot of money. And then the mountain boy also takes our wood from the sawmill, the slash from the sawmill, and cuts that and sells that for firewood. So, you know, it's being able to also make an income from some of the things you do. Sometimes you end up with a little bit of extra work involved as well. As you can see here, the log decided to keep going. It came down out of the woods and continued rolling. So now the project is to get that back up on the road that we can access it. So 
again, like I said, that the winch that we have is just incredibly useful and has saved us in so many ways so often already. It's definitely, we've definitely got our money's worth out of it. And it's not like this is like easy climbing either. It's pretty steep. Thankfully these trees were right here, otherwise this would have continued to roll down the mountainside. <laughs> so, got lucky there. The big bed of thistles up there stopped some little logs. I was kind of hoping it would do the same with this big one, but that's big. That's a lot of weight right there. The view is just breathtaking up here. Getting firewood is always a treat. You might actually have too much firewood. That's never a bad thing. And Phil will have to come up here again tomorrow and get we'll just come back up tonight and fill another truckload. It'll look like quite something going down the mountain with all three trucks loaded up. Okay. Load it up to the brink. Yep. If it starts to come back on you, get out of the way. down as far as you can on the underside of it. So when you lift it, you've got plenty of leverage and room to keep going. He's not moving yet anyway. It's not running right. Deal. What do you did it stop? Huh? Did it stop or did you stop it? No, it stopped. Okay. What happens is it's on too much of an angle. angle. It has automatic shut off. It gets too steep. And then it shuts off. Okay. Uh, just don't worry about that, Austin. In case it lets loose. Huh? Now you're going to hook onto it with the truck? Uh, i got to look at it here. See if I can or it's going to keep going. It might just keep rolling. Yeah. But I'm afraid too. You might have to hook on with the truck. So that that end doesn't go. So that end yep. roll down. Yeah, and then pull the other end up. Yeah. Okay. Out here, if you don't have the levers and the and or the winch, you know it's all levers and pulleys. So you got to figure it out. We didn't have the winch for the first two years here, so we did all this by hand and with the trucks. Yeah, but we didn't ever bring out this big a log. Oh yeah, he did. Oh yeah. He, Bigger at the base. We just dropped it into the road and then cut it up. Yeah. Not if he's using that, no. Out 
out here with our location, one of the things that we have on the vehicles all the time is chains and cables, come alongs, winches. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how many of you guys have ever used these clevises, but we've done much rigging. But you take and screw this down. Don't screw it down tight. You screw it down tight, depending on what you're pulling or holding, you'll never get that back off unless you put heat to it and then you're ruining the temper. Get it down tight, come back a half a turn. You can always get it off. There you go. Alright, I'm gonna stop recording for right now. Okay, they've got it on the winch and are pulling it up. The truck's holding the other piece onto the road. You see how it's wanting to kick out? It's actually pulling the truck pretty darn good. <gasps> Woo! It's moving the truck! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woman, you can't kill the reaction in me. Hey, there you go, there you have it. Extra work in the wild. Doing the stuff. Todd, we're doing the stuff. Alright guys, it's been a long day. We've been up here since like 8 o'clock and it's going, it's probably going on 6.30 or close to it. It's beautiful up here as you can see and we've got three full truckloads. The only thing we're missing is a Dodge. We've got the Chevy, the GMC, and the Ford going on here. <laughs> There's two very tired men. They've worked very hard and this is part of living on the homestead, living the simple life, and being off-grid. So we'll share more of this stuff with you as we progress through the winter and thanks for joining us and we will catch you on the next video. God bless.